Hi everybody, I'm Sandy Alnock, the artist for the Sierra's Friends stamp sets, and today I'm going to bring you a coloring tutorial on coloring Trigger the Horse. Now, before we get started, I'm going to tell you it's really long, and the reason it's really long is because a lot of you requested seeing how I colored the black horse, because Trigger, the horse that I knew, was black. I also colored a brown one because a lot of you requested that. Some of you wanted a white horse, so I did a white horse with like little speckles on him, and I also did a paint. So this video is broken into four sections, and you can look in these four doobly-doos down here and click on which one you would like to watch. You don't have to watch them all. My other option, other than having this really long, long, long video, was to shrink them all by making them go really fast and doing really fast voiceover, and I decided to let them be normal coloring speed. So if you want to watch one and then later on come back and watch another, you can zip forward to any single one of them, and the icons will still be there in between each of the sections as well, so you can skip back and forth anytime you want to watch any of them. And I hope that's helpful. Let me know in the comments in the doobly-doo if you'd like that kind of a thing because when I do other videos, I might be able to do that and give you options for coloring things and seeing a number of ways to do it. But I just hate to do long videos like this, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. My base coat has already been colored with E17, and you can see that I didn't worry a whole lot about getting rid of all those lines, because I'm gonna be putting down so much color, it's not really gonna matter. And next I'm gonna take my E29, which is my dark color, and I'm going to start adding in the places where at first that I know the shadows are going to be. Under his legs, that's going to be an obvious spot. And that's the underside of the leg that's hidden behind him. Underside of this leg. So it's always wisest to tackle the spots where you know where the shadows are going to be for sure. Then on the back side of this leg, I'm going to have all the light coming from the front of the horse. So on the back side of the leg, and I'm just going to follow along some of the, the leg shape. And it'll help to know a little bit about anatomy and how the muscles fall. I'll talk about a few of the muscles. Well, not that I know much about anatomy, but just from knowing how I drew these, um, I know a little bit about where the muscles were. There's gonna be a little shadow underneath of this leg, so under his behind. And then there's like, just picture this whole area being one kind of big circle. So. You want to have some muscle going around, muscle mass going around there. Now if you are really good at this and you really know your horse muscles, you're probably going to shoot me for making these generalizations, but I'm trying to do this for your average crafter so you can just make a picture of a horse that looks good enough for you. Now I'm going to leave a little bit under here, I'm going to put some medium tone in there, but I'm going to leave a little bit of that space right there so that it looks like there's some reflection coming off underneath the bottom. It's going to give him more definition, so it's going to help. And then each one of these kind of muscles in his leg, every, everywhere there's a little knot, I'm just going to add a little bit more right in those spots. Not a ton. We're going to smooth all that out, but it'll just make it look like there's more muscle mass. Now there's going to be this, this um, his back comes down here and meets with his hindquarters, so there's going to be a shadow right there. And then the face, there's going to be light on the front, but then it's going to get darker on the side. And we're just going to fill in all of that. So that's, that's the base shadows, and now I want to add a little bit more in other places. There's going to be a cast shadow from the main. We have a little bit more there, and now I want to start adding some some of the hairs in the mane. So I'm just going to add more lines than what was drawn in the stamp, and this is where I left the stamp without a lot of lines, so that you could have freedom to make it as furry as you want. If you have a a horse that you want to draw that has curly curly fur, curly mane, feel free to make your lines all wavy, and and give your horse wavy lines. If he's got longer hair, then draw more in there. Um, feel free to adapt as you want. Now I want to have one more little spot in there, just I don't want that whole thing to be completely without any definition. I'll add a little bit more there, and now I'll go back here and add a little bit more in the tail. 
and just figure out some of those spots where I want some dark streaks and it's hair so don't feel all tied up in knots over it just make some lines some streaks and follow along the lines in the stamp and then it'll look like all the fur is at least going in the same direction all of that hair and now I'm going to take my medium tone which is the E37 and I'm going to blend out from the dark area into the lighter areas and you see right there you don't see a lot but you'll see a little bit more definition underneath of him when we left that little tiny area there. And everywhere where there's a dark shadow, I'm just going to blend that into the lighter area with light flicks of the marker. Because it's a horse just going to be a, a big mass of a shape. You want some definition, but since it's not anatomically perfect because it's a stamp, <laughs> you just want to make it as good as you can to make it look like there's some muscle there. And so I'm just going to follow along the same, that same like round shape and continue creating some little muscle there and just scribble over some areas that don't look like they're blended really well and that's going to add a little bit more definition add a little bit up here but I want to leave some highlight up there now his tail is going to have a lot more in shadow because it's behind him so just about all of it is going to be covered over whoops by the mid-tone there's not going to be much highlight at all in there so I'm just coloring over top of it all and I'm going to go back in so don't worry and I'm going to add a little more shadow here because there's just going to be highlight on the top where the lights coming from and then blend out the face a little bit and leave that little top area up there now I could go back in with my E17 which as you can see is a pretty dark <laughs> up there a darkish color but what I'm going to do instead and depending on what colors you're using you can get away with this I want to add a little bit more golden tone to it so I'm going to bring some E97 into the mix so instead of going over it with my light tone which I normally do I'm going to go over it with this E97 now E97 is a bright orangey color like that so it's going to just change the tone of those highlights to make them kind of golden like they're in the golden sunlight and that will just change the flavor of it a little bit. He was getting a little bit too much on the red side and this will just warm that up a little bit and I can add more anywhere else that I want as well just to bring more of that golden tone throughout the horse and he's kind of looking horse like now I had a goober here and I just want to show you if you if you have goobers or if you want to add more hair I'm taking my E29 and I'm just going to add another hair I'm also going to add more streaks now that I'm not going to blend out into the tail just to add a lot more drama to it because it's going to add all that contrast because when we added that E37 it just softened up all that detail work so now we get to add some of that right back in and now we have a horse that has a darker tail and I also want to add more to the mane inside the ears will probably be dark and now more along the mane as well all right that is the first one The 
idea for the black horse is the same as the dark brown horse. And I've already got my C6 laid in across the whole thing. A lot of people, when they start coloring something black, will start with like a C2 or C3 because they want some really bright highlights and you don't necessarily need that. I'm going to go in with my C10 now that my, my C6 is laid in there. And I'm just going to do the same thing and add the shadows in the same spots, or roughly the same spots as I just showed you in the dark brown version. So the drop shadows under the hair, under the mane, and the shadow on, from the back before the hindquarters. Under here again, leaving space for some reflection there. Shadows under the legs and all the way down. Each one of these kind of knotted knee parts lumps in the legs. Big hind quarter section. Now here's in the tail, and these are going to get all blended softly, so I'm not super worried about them yet. We're going to add all that detail at the very, very end. And that's with C10. Don't go in really with your black yet. You want to reserve that black for when it really, really, really needs to be dark. Right now we just want it to be, we want it to be a black horse, but we don't want him to be pitch black because then you won't see any detail. Now my C8 is going to act as the medium tone marker. And C8 is, you know, pretty much the same as the the C10, where it's going to feel like it, so I'm not going to add as much because that's going to give me room to do some blending. So on the brown one, I added a lot more of the medium tone than I'm adding here. So I'm going to add some, but not quite as much as I had on the, the previous. Now I can go in with my C6, which was my original color for the base coat on this. And do my blending out with that because that's going to lighten up the colors that we just used. That's C8. And blend it all into the C6 that was already there. And that's where you're going to start seeing that look of the muscles appearing as the color blends together. Darkening the tail because remember the tail isn't going to have much light on it at all. So I'm just coloring over top of all of that. Look it back. And you're really seeing him look more like a black horse than a gray horse. But if he had a whole lot of really, really light color on him, he would be looking an awful lot like, like a gray horse and not a black horse. So now is when it's safer to go back in with some really dark color. So I'm going to go in with my black marker and you'll see how how black the black is compared to some of these other colors. And I'm just going to darken in the very, very darkest of the details. Not all of it, just some of it. 
in order to really make sure everybody knows he's a black horse and not a gray one. So add more detail into the mane. And here's also where, if you've got that black marker out, you can go in and add all kinds of fur and make him look like he's got a really long mane. So all different kinds of stuff in there. Gonna add more detail into the tail. And then I can add just a little bit onto the very backs, the deepest, darkest part of some of those muscles. And now you've got a real good black horse developing here. Give you a little bit more dark underneath the belly because it's getting a little too bright. All right, so there is horse number two. white looking horse and I think I might add some colors onto the mane but we're gonna start with a little bit of W0 because I want to lay in my lightest colors first on this one and normally I would do a whole base coat of the lightest color but here I just want to add in all the spots that aren't pure highlights I want to leave the highlights white because if I start going in too far with it I'm gonna end up with darker highlights. And I'm going to go with the W series on this. You could certainly use the C series, the cool grays, instead of the warm. But I thought for the sake of something different on this one, I'll do the cool grays. Okay, so very soft, soft, soft color that I'm adding. And now I'm going to take my W5 and I'm going to add just a tiny bit. I'm not going to get crazy with it like I did on some of the others because we don't want his whole back to be covered with a lot of color in his whole body. We want him to look very much like a white horse. So I'm going to add just in some of the darkest areas some of that color. Yeah, I think the mane is going to be a different color, so hang tight and we'll, get, we'll deal with the mane in a little bit. We'll get the horse done first, the body. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do with that really dark black color. That's it. Next, I'm going to go in with my C3 and just add a little bit. I'm not going to add a ton, just some. Because again, I don't want him to look like he's this giant gray horse. He's supposed to be a white horse. So some of those areas where I had put extra muscles, those are going to go in with this lighter gray color. the blending out of the face. Then I'm going to grab my W2 and add a little bit more softening of that. Make sure I start really softening out that W5 because the W5 needs to really kind of disappear here. It's there just for the drama of contrast. Don't want a ton of it to still show. If you have too much, you can always go in with a little bit of your blender and lighten some of that up. But I find that coloring it with a little bit of extra marker tends to work. And now my W0 can go back in again and blend out those areas 
just flicking the marker into the light area because that's going to lighten it quite a bit and should make it pretty soft. See, he's got all this shadow on him so that he does appear. If he was completely white, you wouldn't see any shape at all, so we need some definition, but we just need it to be light enough definition that he still comes across as white. And now we can go back in with a little bit of our W5 and add in some spots. And I'm not going to add all the spots in the W5, but I want him to have a little bit of that spotted pony look. I'll do a little bit more with my W3 as well. Okay. Now don't make them real regular and even dots because that's not how Mother Nature does it, so you don't want to do it that way either. Or he'll look like he's got fabric on him rather than paint spots. Now I want to make a little bit more different differentiation in some colors on him. So I want to give him a brown tail and brown mane. That's also, if we add some color in here, it's going to increase the contrast with this whitish looking body. And then he'll definitely look like a light brown, light gray, white horse as we get finished. So this is E31 that I'm using. Sorry about not telling you. And then I'll do a little bit of E34 to add a little bit more to that. And these are a little bit on the cartoon right side. So I'm going to show you how to knock those colors back so he looks much more natural than what this is coming out like, but I wanted to lay down some bright color so we have that contrast. So I've got kind of the base of those down, and I can go back in with my W5 and start adding in more detail on the fur, on the hair. shadows. And then this duller color takes away the sting of that bright brown color, but leaves the contrast of it, so you definitely get the idea he's got a different color in the mane and the tail. pony with spots. And this is going to be a combination of the two types of techniques we've already started with. We're going to start by laying in our C00. I'm going to use that for my lightest color. And just like on the last one where we used the light warm grays, I'm going to make the body the light warm gray so we have that those shapes start to form. And I'm going to take a W4 and create some shadow shapes, a little bit of definition in the body. I'm using W4 just to try something different than, or I'm sorry, the C4 instead of the W5 because it's a little bit lighter, a little bit easier on making your, your shadows appear. 
and it'll be easier to mush out all covers. And then I'll take my C2 and just do some quick blending out. On any of these horses, if you make the horse look all beautifully blended, you don't have to do much more. I didn't do much blending on any of this. I might go back in on some of them and add different levels of shading on the little boy or the little girl if you choose to make it a girl. But if you spend some time on the horse and making that look dimensional, people's eye will fill in the rest of the detail on the little person. And you won't have to do as much detailed coloring on those things because you've spent adequate time on the big wow part of the image. That goes for pretty much any image. If you color, color something so it really looks dimensional, the main portion of it, then the rest of it doesn't really matter. His tail and his head, or his mane, are going to be a different color, so I'm not worried about them right now. So that's, oh, let's see, I guess I need to do a little bit more on the tummy here. Okay. There. Now we're ready to add some spots. And I want to make this horse look like a brown and So we're going to make this look like a brown and white spotted pony. So I'm going to start first by at least putting my color in the mane. This is E23. Pop that a little bit there for you. And if I haven't mentioned it before in this video, use whatever browns you want to use. Don't feel like you have to use mine. I'm just randomly grabbing browns from my container, so there's no science behind why I'm choosing these, other than you're going to need some darks and some lights in whatever browns you're going to use. So this E2, E23 is a pretty general medium brown color. So, so that is the first thing, and now I've pulled up a picture of a pony on my computer so I can kind of look and see where the spots fall and just sort of fill in where I think those spots will be. The dark areas versus the lighter areas. Fill them in right over top of the grays that I've already got going. Now if you can make some of them look like the muscles are defining those areas. So say there's going to be some spots that will start here, some others that will start here. If they line up right across, you're not going to look like you're getting that definition between them. But let's see, most of his behind on this photo is going to be the brown. He's going to have a few light spots up here toward the top. And then I'm going to go down the legs to about like this. bottom of the legs are white. And I'm getting this underbelly is just going to need to be dark to just disappear. Going to add a little bit more spots here on the tummy. Just a little bit more. And like I'm doing, look at a picture. If you aren't a horse person and you don't know exactly what that horse looks like, then feel free to ask Mother Nature about looking at a picture of one she's created. And I'm just going to do a little bit underneath here. And I'm going 
gonna add a little bit more than what's in the photo on the face just so I get some some good contrast. So I know a lot of horses have just the white that goes down their mane or down their nose. Okay. Now I can see in here where some of the spots were that I had already put my shadows. So I want to go in and add those shadows in the dark brown colors. So I'm using E37. I'm not ready to go completely dark yet because I'm trying to work up my, my confidence in where my muscles are going to be first. It's going to be a little bit dark here, right where, remember that, where that muscle is. And you want to follow along and make those muscles wherever those spots are. And I'm going to go back with my E23 and blend them out. Just do section by section until I'm happy with how they're coming out because I want them to look natural. But you want the shadows in the dark browns to line up with the shadows that you had going on with the grays. And if you have to go back in and add more so that you end up with the same level of contrast, you can certainly do that. So right here where, let's see, I'm going to grab a C4, yeah, and I want that muscle right there to have a little more definition, so I'm going to add a little bit extra in there. So my shadow is going to go from brown to gray to brown to gray to brown to gray. I can also add more shadows in the other areas that I'm not seeing enough contrast. So down here on the tummy, let me just go back in and soften those. And then I'm going to add my shadows underneath where the neck meets the back, where the back meets the hindquarters or whatever this is called. I'm losing as, as I'm trying to talk while coloring. Good. A little more shadow just by coloring the same color over top. It doesn't all have to be done by the dark markers. But the bolder you are in getting some dark color in there. The more likely you're going to be able to make it look like an actual horse with lots of spotted colors. So I'm going to add more of my shadows on the side of the face. And soften those out as they meet up with the rest of the spotted area. I'm going to go back in. Now I'm more confident to go in with my dark colors. So I can take, just like I did before with the E29, and making my really dark areas. And start working on the mane and the tail. Just like we did back in the brown horse version. Coloring some lines to add some definition. Being really loose with it. It's just hair. Not, not a crucial thing. I'll go back in with my E37. Remember there's a little light coming back here, so you don't need a whole lot of light in the tail. So this will soften all those lines that we just made. And then I want to leave the light on the top side, but color over all of the areas that we did on the E29. And now I can take my E23 and I'm just adding a little bit more blending or detail or whatever I want to along the way. 
from their back. So now we have a spotted horse. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you made it through all four colorings, and if not, then you can go back and see them at another time as well. There are still links down here if you want to go backwards and see any of them. And I'm also going to link you in the next screen to any of the available Sierra's Friends coloring videos. Try clicking on any of the images, and as I have videos available with those images, they will become links. Okie dokie. I will talk to you guys later. Have a really great day. And leave me a comment in the doobly-doo and tell me which one was your favorite coloring of Trigger. I'll see ya. Bye now.